PC gaming is such a joyous part of our lives, but it's in a slightly weird, almost complicated state right now. You probably heard from some people that it is the worst possible time to buy, but then from others that it's the best. PC gaming has been really expensive, and yet now some people are saying it's really cheap. So what on earth is going on, what's the truth, and ultimately what do you need to know before buying a gaming PC? Well, that's exactly where I come in, as in this video I'm going to explain everything PC gaming in 2022 including PC part prices, the best times to buy, the new launches from Nvidia, AMD and Intel, and ultimately I'm here to make sure you're getting the best possible gaming PC for the best possible price. We start with the state of PC gaming, and honestly, in the last couple of years, it's definitely taken a little bit of a beating. PC gaming really shouldn't be an expensive hobby, but ever since the pandemic, building a cheap gaming computer has been incredibly difficult. An Xbox Series X will cost you around about £450, and it can handle 4K gaming at 60fps in a fair few titles, but if you want to build a comparatively powerful PC, well, you'd be lucky to do it for under £1,000. We had stock shortages for pretty much everything, with prices jacked up by scalpers and unethical retailers, and just general enthusiasm for the hobby, I have to be honest, is taking a little bit of a sad turn. However, I'm now very pleased to report that we're now starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. A normal PC gaming service is set to resume. The word on the street is that Nvidia actually has too many graphics cards now, and prices are set to drop even more than they currently are, with increased pressure to sell, and competition for both Team Blue and Team Red, meaning we could see all-out price wars. Not to mention that the cost of RAM and SSDs is coming down a lot at the moment, so if you are looking to build yourself a budget gaming computer, or at least upgrade one, we're actually quite well set now. I think the too long didn't listen is that the wave of product cycles are all starting to come to an end, and as production is up and demand is down, prices can start to get lower and lower. And properly understanding this is absolutely key when buying yourself a gaming PC, because it gives you full control on how long your PC is going to be current for. I'll be giving you the full details on all of the launches in just a second, but it is always worth remembering that just because there are new products coming up, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should actually wait for them. Sure, new products are always going to be better, but they are often more expensive, and you don't always know exactly how long it's going to take for them to arrive, let alone whether the product will actually be the thing that you've been waiting for. If there are deals to be had on something you actually need right now, then why wait? Especially when you consider that all components are going to be outdated eventually. It usually works that the longer a product has left in its life cycle, the more expensive it is. So in theory, you shouldn't be massively out of pocket. Though of course in practice, buying an RTX 3080 a week before the 4080 launch is probably a bad idea. But hey, how much it matters is entirely up to you. I just want you to be fully aware of what's coming up so you can make an informed buying decision. But let's move on to the big question. What exactly is coming up? Well, pretty much everything really, from SSDs to GPUs to motherboards. And this is exactly why you're hearing so much about it on YouTube at the moment, because there is just so much PC gaming buzz. The big one is the NVIDIA RTX 4080, and this is the successor to the pretty awesome RTX 3080. It's going to use more power, and probably cost even more than last time, but performance is rumoured to be hugely superior to the last generation, so people, myself included, are getting incredibly excited. After all, the graphics card is the component that directly dictates your in-game frame rate, so it's the biggest upgrade that gamers can make to their PC in pretty much all situations. I've already spoken about this in massive detail, and if you haven't already seen those videos, you can find them in the top round corner of your screen that gives you the full lowdown, specs, performance, everything you need to know, go and check it out. There are also new graphics cards coming out of Intel and AMD though, so don't throw your money at Nvidia just yet. Intel is releasing the first generation of Arc GPUs in the coming weeks, which are very much aimed at more budget-friendly rigs that want top-end 1080p and 1440p gaming in the latest games. As these cards are a first generation, there definitely are some teething issues that need addressing right now, but from what we can tell so far, if you're playing the right game, they might actually offer outstanding value for money. But I am going to offer absolutely no advice on Arc until they've come in this studio and I've actually tested them firsthand. The awesome news is that the party doesn't stop here, and AMD's RDNA 2 GPUs will launch later this year too. You can expect very similar performance to that of Nvidia's 4000 series, and if history repeats itself, slightly lower pricing than Team Green 2. Whether AMD will have caught up to Nvidia in ray traced performance is anybody's guess. 
but if they can deliver more power efficient chips than Nvidia, it might be enough to put Team Red on top this time around. Either way though, the thing to remember is that both Nvidia and AMD are probably only going to be launching high end GPUs this year, we're talking like £500 plus, so if you're on the market for a more budget friendly gaming GPU right now, then it's probably not worth waiting around. But I would love to be proved wrong. If you're after an affordable way to improve your PC gaming setup, why not check out the Sonus Ray? The Sonus Ray is an incredible sounding soundbar that's available for under $300. I've been using this for the last couple of months all around the house and I honestly love it. Firstly, with my PC gaming setup downstairs, this actually has an optical jack so you can use this with a TV or a gaming computer. But then the thing for me that absolutely sets this thing apart is that this is a Sonus device and you can pair it with any others that you own to create a multi-room setup and then suddenly you've got the party house. All from your soundbar. It works with pretty much any TV or gaming computer that's got an optical connection, it's got Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and then my favourite feature, not only these touch sensitive buttons, but this play pause button that remembers what you're playing last, you hit that, and then bang, you're resuming. So why not consider upping your audio game? Check out the Sonus Ray today with the link down below. Now I hope your wallets are ready for round two, as it's not just GPUs launching, but it's the full PC suite as well, with new boards, CPUs and SSDs. The closest launch is rumoured to be AM5 at Gamescom, which is their new motherboard socket for B650, X670 and X670S motherboards. These new boards bring two things, new features and new CPUs. It's the CPUs that are more notable to gamers really, as you're going to see increased performance in single threaded applications, which in layman's terms, translates into maximum gaming frame rates, which is absolutely perfect if you're a lover of high refresh rate monitors. The extra features that you'll get will of course vary depending on the motherboard, but most notably it's going to be faster ports and support for PCI Generation 5 and DDR5 memory. Intel has had DDR5 support for almost a year now, but in my tests it hasn't really made any difference to gameplay. As for PCI Generation 5 SSDs, well, these aren't out yet, but they will be launching with the boards. And Generation 5 GPUs might be coming a little bit later this year, but I doubt that either of these will actually affect your frame rate just yet. So personally speaking, I would argue these new motherboard features are very much nice to haves rather than necessities. You should only really look at these if you need a new gaming CPU. And boy oh boy, believe it or not, we're still not done, as Intel is also launching new motherboards and CPUs this year with their new Raptor Lake range. These will be very similar to AMD's offering, and it's essentially an update to last year's very successful Alder Lake CPUs, so you can expect more gaming performance, potentially higher core counts, and improved PCI Generation 5 support. So as you can see, there are a lot of launches coming your way this year and definitely a lot to think about. And the simple advice that I have for you today is just to prioritise what you actually need. We all like building new PCs, tinkering and having the latest gadgets, but please don't be a slave to the system. Ultimately, what is going to make your personal experience better? Do you need more storage as your drives are always full? Are your games stuttering from overly high CPU usage? Or are you fed up of running your games at low settings or having minimal frame rates because your graphics card just can't keep up? Or, as is probably going to be true for a lot of people watching this, is your PC absolutely fine and you don't need to upgrade anything? The worry at the moment is all around history repeating itself with stock shortages and I think a lot of people are scared and will be pre-ordering the latest gear to avoid missing out this time. But with a crazy high inflation that we're having this year, manufacturing and running costs all going through the roof, it's actually probably a bad idea. Okay, if you simply must have it no matter what then obviously buy it, but there are just so many videos floating around right now telling you that you should buy things right now or you should be waiting and don't buy anything now. I just wanted to put a video out there that was almost a little bit of a breather and I decided using an OLED monitor for a static background was a great idea. It wasn't. This video is not a hype piece. This is all about giving you the information and the tools you need to know what's coming out and essentially prepare for it. Please don't go thinking you have to buy something just because everybody's talking about it. If it was me, honestly, well, I would just wait and see what happens. I'd leave the CPU launch alone and probably pick up a new graphics card once both AMD and Nvidia have launched their sets. They both outcompete each other and if the stocks don't run out, there'd be some form of price war, even if it's only 50 quid here and there. But for all of the games that I personally play at the moment, albeit on a 3080, I just don't need any extra performance. So why would I go out and buy a new graphics card that's going to have loads of potential down the line, but sort of pay for it now? But here's the thing, that's my situation. Just because that applies to me, it doesn't mean that it applies to you. 
Maybe you're CPU limited and you need to upgrade. Maybe you've got a system from six years ago, you want to completely do everything from scratch, or maybe you want to play like 8K gaming or 4K over 100 FPS, and the current cards just aren't cutting it for you. It's all about your personal situation and doing what is right for you. So let me know what is right for you down in the comment section below. What new component are you most excited for? And assuming it's good, why are you buying it? What do you need? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. But thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Smash the like button if you have. Get yourself subscribed for more just like this. And if you want to check out current pricing on anything in my setup, you can find it linked down below. See you in the next one.